from Clarkwoods.com. This is Horribly Off Topic, episode number 120. I am Chris. And I am Walter Cronkite. <laughs> I am the Tom Rocco. I can't do it. Can't do I'm it. Steve. Uh, I'm Chris. And I'm Steve. And I have a prediction for you, Steve. No, you know no, what? No, I have a prediction. No, fuck I, you. It, the <laughs> last two you made fucking came true, so I'm worried that what you're going to say... I have a prediction, Steve, and I am gonna, I'm going to get it out there because I think it's very important. I predict that in the next 365 days, Steve, you, you, Steve Woodbury, will win the lottery. Like, the, the Mega Millions. The Mega Millions? The Mega Millions. Big, big fucking payout. All right. And that's not all. I guess I have to buy a Mega Millions ticket. Huh? That's not all. Uh, a day later or a day before that, you're going to win the fucking Powerball. I'm going to win both. You're going to win both. Both the Powerball and the Mega Millions within the same week. It, it, uh, they say the odds of that happening are, are pretty uh, astronomical. That's what uh, Nate Silver over in uh, 538 says. But um, <laughs> guys, <laughs> no, never, never been wrong. <laughs> never. Ah, whatever. Come on. You gotta we, we gotta pull ourselves up. We got it. We we got great news today, Steve. We got great, great news. I the, this uh article uh from the from the independent from a UK newspaper, but we won't hold that against them. Hillary Clinton set to receive more votes than any US presidential candidate in history except Barack Obama. That's great news, Steve. That is pretty great. That's great news. Sorry, I had to open this beer. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna win the popular vote in our country by. I mean, how can that be bad news, Steve? How can it? How? How can it be? Bad? Dude, stop. I'm gonna drink. Good. Um. So, if you think about it, like, it's terrible. Like that but, she won the popular vote. That's not terrible. No, Steve. I'm, I'm talking about who actually won the presidency and we're, we're going to have to talk about it because it's impossible not to, I wanted to not talk about it. But then when I started thinking about it, because mm. like, you know, the day after is when I was like, let's not talk about it Yeah. because I had gotten one hour of sleep <laughs> and then went to work and I was like, I was a fucking zombie all day. Mm. I don't know how I got anything done. Yeah. Um, and it's just, why? Like, because this fucking jackass won? Yeah. Yeah. He, he won. He because did. he did everything possible to win. Mm. He, start, <laughs> he, he started his campaign out just being as, I don't want to say racist, but like uh, national. You could say racist. I, I, well, I don't want to. You could because say misogynist. I could say those things, but I'm not going to in this moment. You could, you could say sexist. I'm just going to say that he was just. Or... Stop. Um, Any of those things would be accurate. No, I don't know about the last one. Well, you said, you know. because that's not proof. <laughs> yeah, I know they're trying to get him to settle out of court. Okay, well that's fine, <laughs> but it's in civil court and won't give him a criminal charge, which won't make it so he can't right. be president. Right, you know. um, so, uh, what I'm trying to say is, like, he started out his campaign just being as nationalistic as possible, mm -hmm. which a lot of people. Yeah. Um, are really behind. They're just like, oh, the no. such and such is taking over our country. Yeah. So basically, he got that vote. Yes. Yep. And then, ba and then you know, he got the pussy grabbing vote. That's not what I'm saying, Chris. <laughs> let me just fucking do this. <laughs> okay. Um. He. I'm sorry. I'm a little angry. <laughs> I understand that, but he he did that, and then he basically he chose Mike Pence mm. as his running mate. <laughs> yeah. You know why? So he wouldn't lose the evangelical vote. Oh. So he gets the fucking disenfranchised, like, every man. Mm -hmm. and, and then he, he gets, gets the people the who like to electrocute gay people. Yes, the evangelicals make, who make are... Make women pay for funerals for their miscarriages. Yep, Yay. that's... that's that. Okay, so he got those two. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm just explaining why he won. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's not... And then... Over on the other side of the ticket, mm -hmm. there's another outsider that's trying to, like, you know, muscle his way in and mm -hmm. has a decent amount of support. But the Democratic Party establishment says, no, we need to have this candidate mm. because she'll do really great. And she would do really great. And she is doing really great. She's won more of the popular vote than anybody aside from Barack Hussein Obama. OK, but... But you really think that um, that a Jewish socialist would do well in this uh, in this environment? I the, think the problem was is that the people in the middle, the mm -hmm. ones that were like, I hate both of these people. Mm -hmm. But 
if I vote for Hillary, right, things are going to be more of the same. Mm-hmm. If I vote for Trump, that's throwing a wrench into the system. Mm. And so basically a lot of people that were undecided or were like the kind of like, you know, you, I, I even said it like even half jokingly mm. that, you know, voting for Trump would be, would do just that. Yeah. Um, but like the Mike Pence card was just like too much of a thing that made me not even want to dabble with that idea. Mm. So there's a lot of people that just said, fuck it. And just voted for him because mm. they were like, I hate both of these people, but he's going to actually do something maybe that could change things oh. or cause like, you know, the the Democratic version of the Tea Party mm. in two years. Two years, everyone. Two years well, is when you need to go out and back go out yeah, but the, and vote. But I don't know if you read up about it. They, things are very grim uh, for the Democratic Party in two years because most of the things that are in terms of Senate seats that are up for grabs are in solid, solid, bloody red states. There's there's almost no chance of picking anything up and in, in not say that we shouldn't be out there and try to do something about it. But uh, from what I've heard, there's there's almost no chance of picking anything up. Well, let's maybe gerrymander a little bit like they yeah. did and get. Get some districts. And assuming, get some... assuming President Trump doesn't find some way to see. All right, so <sighs> and it, it, he might actually succeed in what he's doing. If like all the mm. people that uh, that said that they're going to move to Canada, right? If uh, he, if he becomes president, if they yep. all like attempt to and, and do, mm-hmm. that's that's jobs that are opening up for people that are unemployed. Oh, so that's well, there, that there, is going to bring America back. Oh, no, make it great. Make it great again. See, <laughs> make it great. Hey, interesting. He might have been referring. I don't know if this is what he was talking about, Steve, but I'm, I don't know if you know. But the last time that the uh, there, there are two prior, prior times in, in recent memory that the Republicans have controlled both the executive and both houses of the legislature. The first of those times resulted in uh, the America's America being great. At, at a depression. And the second of those times, uh, uh, Steve, I don't know if you're familiar, resulted in the Great Recession. So if his goal is to make America great again, I, I think he's set up for success. Yeah, I mean, if being great is to be uh, in like financial ruin, mm-hmm. then he's, he's, we are well he's got on some our way. he's got some good predecessors to show. Absolutely. But I'm just saying this this is this is how he succeeded. This is wh- how he su- he basically did whatever he could to become president. And mm-hmm. the thing is that like at the end of the election, like that that last week when there was the the damn freaking thing about the the Mr. Comey. Yeah, that if that shit went on, um the, the trick is like if you I mean if you you, you watch television like I don't it, but like there was the TV on maybe when you were at home while having dinner with the family. <laughs> no, I got a story about that. But okay, yes. but like, and you saw the, the the Hillary ads, which were basically showing Donald Trump being an asshole, mm-hmm. which he is. But a lot of people were like, "I like that asshole." I, he tells it like it is. Right. That's why I was about, like, you know, the gays and the women and the 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 retarded people. I really like. See, that was what that ad was. It was basically mm. saying, "Look at this asshole." Yep. Look at how terrible he is. Mm-hmm. But it didn't, on the other hand, show why Hillary was good. And in the, that, that going she, into and she's not any of those things. I hear what you're saying, Chris, and I understand. No, it's all right. But the like, if you're just going to be like this person's shitty, mm-hmm. vote for me. Yeah, that doesn't work. And, and I, here, it should, yes. but it but it but it doesn't and because here, our country is full of racists and bigots and misogynists, and and that's what I've been saying since this started. All right, and that's all right. Hold, where on, I was hold on, hold on, from. hold on, hold on. All right, so every time there, I, say, I there are racists and bigots and misogynists out there in the world, mm-hmm. and there are people in this world that uh, that aren't. Right. That may be just a little bit less intelligent than you or I or some other. Perhaps. And I think the problem with the way the the uh, people on the left, their dialogue is mm. basically like, how could you be so stupid as to vote for this person? Well, I don't I'm not coming at it. Uh, I don't want to be mistaken for coming at it as people being stupid. Because as I've well, seen, uh, I've uh, seen the I've seen the graphs out there that um, that indicate that uh, it was white white people across the board, including college educated whites, 
that voted for Donald Trump. So it's not an issue of intelligence. It's an issue of being okay with racism and bigotry and uh, and sexism. It's, you know, they are absolutely okay with that. They say, they say that they're not, but their, their okayness with racism and bigotry and sexism is implicit in... Uh, in their voting for this man, if not explicit. Um, and, and I don't think there's any argument around that. They think, they're like, I don't think he's serious. I don't think, I, he's, he's kidding. But what I'm trying to say is that mm. it, is we need to change our rhetoric. As sure. far as like we the we liberals, yes, okay. We we folks on the left need to change our rhetoric mm. because like the what we're saying right now, like I mean, I've complained about it like yeah. many times on this show about mm-hmm. people like going not so on on somebody for saying the wrong thing yeah. on the internet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like um or saying or doing something and then just basically being ostracized and fired from their career right. uh, because they said the wrong thing one time. Mm-hmm. Which, which they might have said more than once is like the wrong thing. Like right. but, and like it might be a systemic problem that they're saying the wrong thing, but like this attack on on words and the attack on like you know what you're saying and what you're doing and I just don't like it and I a lot I you know and I can imagine a lot of people like me equally don't like it mm. so the way the way the the left get co- comes through and just says you know and just preaches mm-hmm. I mean if you look at like us yeah you, you and I we are we we grew up around people that were openly gay. Mm, yeah, uh, I mean, I I wasn't aware of um, of I was I was obviously dim. <laughs> um, I wasn't aware of the people who were openly gay until after I left uh, high school, and then I was then I was aware. Okay, well, I mean, like I'm not but saying yes, yeah, like you know, sorry, I shouldn't. I I'm not I saying just, in our formative years, like when we're like in middle school, yeah, or but like you know, in high school and right. then beyond, we 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 knew people. Yeah, certainly that, in college. Yeah, yeah. sorry, like, I should have just conceded the point. Yeah, <laughs> like we 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 grew up around people that were gay, and we we are comfortable around people that are gay. Mm-hmm. Like our our parents, and maybe you know, like you know that that little itty bitty generation between our parents and and us, yeah, and us were probably less likely to have been around somebody that is yeah. openly gay. They, they mm-hmm. probably have been around people that they assumed were gay, but didn't right. openly come out just because of what, you know, yeah. Yeah. the stigma that's attached to it. Mm-hmm. But now we live in a, in a society where it's not like there's the, the stigma isn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's, I mean, for certain right wing groups yeah. that Mike Pence is all over, mm. uh, it is frowned upon, but in yeah. in general, society doesn't say it, you can't be gay. Yeah. Like you can be gay, and we'll accept you. Not yet, but you know, <laughs> certain. I think you know, uh, when people get upset, like you know, when someone's being explicit about a gay act, and like someone is kind of skeeved out by it, mm. that's not unreasonable because it's not something that you find in any way pleasant, <laughs> and. You shouldn't necessarily, because mm. if you are heterosexual, then you might not want to think about about any, uh, scissor sex or butt sex, or, or just you know, getting you know, someone bent over a piano bench, getting a grease fist shoved in their asshole. I don't see anything wrong with that. So, well, you know, I find it. I to mean, be we a did little... talk once about me having a phase, so maybe that's all that it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, like, but our generation, and I imagine even more so in in, mm. in the millennials. Yeah. They they they're way more accepting about uh, mm-hmm. people's sexuality. Yeah. And so I think it's just things over time, and I think the way people of our parents generation like find it acceptable yeah. is that like you know they they get into a situation where they're like you know at work or whatever mm-hmm. and they have have a, a good a good rapport with somebody at work and then they find out yeah. that this person that they've had a good rapport with is a homosexual or something like that yeah they they're just like wait a minute all this stuff that i've kind of had in the back of my brain saying that this mm-hmm. is bad like this person isn't trying to like grab my cock or whatever yeah. in and trying to like, you know, molest me or anything or any weird, crazy shit. This is a person that's great that I enjoy talking to and I enjoy working with. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's how minds get changed. They don't get changed. That's how my mind got changed. I mean, I, I guess that's where it becomes relevant that I wasn't uh, even just that two year age difference between you and me. I wasn't as aware of the people who, who I now know to be gay and who were probably in the, in the process of coming out 
I, it was when I went to college and I met people that my own um, my own mind was opened because I certainly know that um, that I had some uh, some some mind opening that that was due. I'm, I'm not phrasing this this uh, this well, but it wasn't butt opening. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I did I did think about it for a little while. Oh, it well, it turned know. out to not be not be for me. Well, at least you didn't actually try and find out uh-huh. it was not for you. There would be nothing wrong with trying. It well, I don't been, know. It, it might have been. been un- it might have been, been very uncomfortable, uncomfortable for you. Right, if, you know. <laughs> Um, but that's what I'm saying. It's just like, but like you know, they're having their their minds open later in life than we did. Yes. Yeah. Which which is which, which is harder which is a harder pill to swallow for them. Mm-hmm. And and it's just you know we just need to like be more cognizant of that when we're talking about things. I mean, like right. obviously, like trans people need to have rights, mm-hmm. but like there's going to be people for, of maybe even our generation and 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 back. Yeah. Uh, that are going to be like just a little bit cautious about that at yeah. least and maybe outright it. against they, it. Yeah. And they haven't met anybody. I mean, yeah. I, I can say like my own, I mean, I, maybe, maybe we can even go back in time on, on this show and fight it. My own, um, understanding and, and open mindedness about trans people has just transformed just in the last couple of, not that I Your was ever trans pressed. opinion has transformed. <laughs> As, 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 yes, my trans opinion has transformed. Is that the name of the episode? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, just in the last couple of years, not that I was necessarily prejudiced against them before, but I didn't know anybody all that well that was a trans person. And I, then, I still don't. And then I had a brilliant student uh, a couple of years ago who I still know and, and I'm friends with now, who's graduated, um, who I believe to be, uh, to be trans. Um, I can pretty much, can, I can pretty much uh, say that. Um, based on their their Twitter, well, just handle. don't say who they are, and then you know. Right, um, and then now I have I have students in uh, in one of my uh, classes that are um, that are very much sort of all over the the, the gender map, um, and so I know a, a lot of people, and they are they are extraordinary people, and um, that was part of what made Wednesday particularly hard for me. But I don't want to get us off track. Uh, no, but I, I, you know, I mean, do you understand? Like, you know. I, I I understand uh, love, and if if we don't want to get all mushy, uh, understanding as a as a common principle of trying to treat other people as human beings and understand where they're coming from. Yes, I mean that is a great thing to teach, and that is that is a lot of what is being taught to hmm. our children. No, but I but what you're saying it it, it, it goes both ways. We yeah. have to try and be understanding of. The, the human being behind the bigot behind the sexist yeah I mean we we I mean we don't have to but we can try and there was there was an episode of The Simpsons that was like I think in the mid 90s where it was John Waters was a uh, hmm. was a guy that uh, that owned a, an eclectic little shop in in the in mall or something like yeah. that and then Homer became friends with him and then and then it came out that he was gay and Homer didn't know what to do like, right or something like that yeah like being for and like that is that is like perfect for mm-hmm. like you know our parents' generation about yeah. that. I mean, like, but n- now that you know we're twenty years later, yeah, it's it's I, it, that's less of an issue. I mm-hmm. mean, um, it, it's like obviously we have people have to fight for their civil rights. Um, now, it, not just the people who are fighting for the civil rights, but, but those the of people us who that already are, have our civil yes, rights. Yes, we need also to, need to fight need to fight for, for those them. people. I, I in, in, but the thing is, like the the you may. You may get them, mm. uh, but you're not like like I said. The the, the hearts and minds aren't necessarily going to be changed just because you all of a sudden now have these rights, right? And and so the way you you use your rhetoric about how you have your rights or whatever, and just you know, I'm not saying stop saying and doing the things that you're doing. It's just think about these other people that are against you, and then try to like you know. You know, when people do debate or whatever, mm-hmm. it's better to do the to, to argue the other side right. just so you can learn about the other side. So you can learn about the whole situation. So maybe even though you're having an argument about something, you can mm. actually come to some sort of compromise. Yeah, you can have have. Uh, I don't think you can win a debate. You, I don't think you can win a presidency in this case without understanding who the uh, who the other side is. And uh, and as maybe maybe that's a that's a point to be made. Maybe 
uh, Hillary didn't understand the other side uh, as well as she should have. She's she's great at debate prep. You know, she did well in at least two out of the three debates. Yeah, I mean, um, I think she and, like easily like you know. It, it, but in terms of the ad that you pointed to, does she understand who she's? Yeah, I mean, you want you want to you want. I mean, like, but like like you were saying, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, somebody on your Facebook wall or whatever, or somebody that had posted something on your Facebook yeah. about a bunch of bu- a bunch of things about Trump or whatever. Yeah. They didn't agree with it. They said they, that uh, that's all lies. Yes. That and was it, just it, last week. And yeah. so if <laughs> if that's the case, then you can't change that person's mind. Yeah. No, you can't. And if, it, like if if you they think that things that are one hundred percent true right. are could, lies. Yeah, Fabu- and, fabricated by the media. Yeah, and there's a definite problem. Right. I mean, but the I thing can, is, like, I don't. I like. I. I personally, you know, for me, I have nothing to say that like could be a solution to that. I don't know what to do. I. I don't know what to do either. Which is part of the reason um, that I quit Facebook this week. Um, here, 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 cheers, here. ding, ding. Um, because uh, I, and I actually, you know, so after the after the election, and I don't I don't want to get us too uh, away from from our main topic here. But well, we could talk about whatever. I mean, yeah, we well, could get well, horribly off topic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm jerking off my dick. <laughs> um, so you know, I can after- we call the episode that I'm jerking <laughs> off my dick. <laughs> As opposed to jerking off my dick. Yeah. Um, no. So, uh, I I actually because uh, what what you were just talking about happened last Friday. The Friday, sorry, prior to the election. The Friday prior to the election. That it was when that happened. Um, and uh, everybody that I include on both sides of the uh, on both sides on all sides of the political spectrum. Um, was paying me compliments, generally speaking, about how I was talking about about it in terms of my reaction to it and not trying to demonize people. And they all thought I was being pretty fair-minded. And then Wednesday rolls along, and um, I posted something to the effect of... Um, that I was uh, that I was upset and, um, and disgusted and so on and so forth. Um, but I didn't demonize the other side. And then... This is this is what led me to uh, to leave Facebook. Was I got one person, a, a cousin, um, saying uh, eventually, I don't know why um, people are all upset about it. It's no big deal. Um, something she said something flippant at the end of it, and my friend uh, Brendan responded to her saying, "Why? If that's what you feel, great. But why did you need to say anything at all? You're just causing." more uh more pain for somebody who is who is obviously upset um and so uh, this led you know i started unfriending people on facebook which is i I had i had heretofore just been unfollowing which is a way to stop seeing their bullshit but still maintain being friends with them and i was just angry enough that i was that i was unfriending and uh, I'm trying to wrap around to the fucking point here. Because wrap um, around, you can't lose. I got, that is a fucking callback. You guys, <laughs> you can look that up on your own time. But I got to the point where I didn't feel, and and so then a, a friend of mine was engaged, uh, who a, a Republican or at least conservative. Uh, he might be a might be more libertarian. Is he? He might be a giant. He might be. Um, he and I were having a back and forth where he was he was obviously as a conservative more hopeful about how things were going to happen. Just that's two down for me so far. <laughs> um, and I'm still working on my first. Uh, perhaps I would be more entertaining if I were uh, drinking more. Um, I, I I was like and I'm like I'm definitely having a couple. We're doing it early. Like yep. the, the Patriots game isn't on until like eight. Isn't on until eight. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the Seahawks, so they're definitely going to have to cheat this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. All right. Continue. Sorry. Um, uh, at any rate, so um, I just got to the point where I I, I was having a, a good conversation with a friend of mine who's a conservative, and I paid him a compliment. I said, "Listen, you are always um, kind of even minded and not insulting, and and I thank you for that." But then later, as the day went on, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm too angry, and I don't want to be angry at the... I I am angry at these people in terms of what they believe, but I don't want to be angry at these people to get back to what we were just talking about. Like, it's not going to do me any good to just be shouting um, at the the other side right now. 
Um, so let me get the fuck off of here, uh, which I did. I, I sent out a message to all of the people that I am not already in touch with. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, listen, this is where I'm This is where I'm at. You can find me on Twitter. You can, here's my you email. You can find me on Twitter. It's <laughs> at ECC1977. Uh, here I am. Uh, here's my email. And if you're, I, I even threw my phone number out there. I was like, listen, if you want to text me, go ahead and text me. And then I logged out of Facebook everywhere, and it's been like 48 hours or so, and it's uh, been, it's been 48 great. of the most pleasant hours of uh, of my week because I'm not I'm not seeing any of it. It's fun because uh, like it's well I think it's it's also kind of odd because like the way you know the people that I follow on Twitter, and I think mm. this is a, a good indication for a lot of people that yeah. have that have our similar way of thinking. Right. Like if you looked at any of our Twitter feeds, mm. you'd think that Hillary was going to win in a landslide. <laughs> <You would. laughs> well, but, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. But then, like, if you looked at the fucking television, mm -hmm. and then uh, Lester Holt was like, bah, 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 yeah. and Donald Trump wins Florida and Pennsylvania and blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. So. Back to back to the actual election again. Mm. Um, the I think the biggest tragedy. I mean, it was a double tragedy. Yeah. Um, for the American people. Yeah. Was Joe Biden's son passing away? Okay. Because it was a tragedy for him mm -hmm. because he lost his boy. He lost his son. Yeah. And it's a tragedy for us because if that didn't happen, yeah, he Joe, probably would have run. Yeah. And and people have very, I mean, I, I and was, he is a person that people consider someone who speaks their mind. He is, uh, yeah. I mean, so I was telling you before the show, before we started recording the show, like all of the positive or at least funny tweets that I've favorited in the last uh, five days or so have been references to Joe Biden saying, you know, like we're not going to give the Trump's the Wi-Fi password, which of course wouldn't matter cuz the Trump cuz fucking Donald Trump wants to spend most of his time in fucking New York and he's asking his goddamn advisors how few days he has to actually spend at the White House. Fucking asshole. He didn't so, care he about He doesn't want the fucking job. Oh yeah, my god. That's I just, see he didn't want the job. He just wanted to prove that he could win mm -hmm. and be the president. Yep. Like and he's hiring. That's that's the like the people. If that anybody that has ever seen The Apprentice or has ever listened to any sort of Trump interview from between the time from the 1980s yeah. or actually maybe even the 1970s mm. until now, and didn't realize that he didn't give a shit about American the American people at all. He just gave a shit about winning because that's all he cares about. Like, uh, I, and that's the and it, it's it's it, it like. We just, uh, well, not we, because we obviously didn't <laughs> fall for the con, but yeah. the American people just fell fell for the biggest long con ever. Yeah. They did, and he sa he's even said it. I mean, there's that meme out there. He's like, if I were ever going to run for president, I would run as a Republican because those people are stupid and they would vote for <laughs> they would vote for anybody. And he just proved he just proved him right. Yeah, like and at, that that I mean, so there's that. You can't blame the guy for like saying he's going to do something and then doing and it. then winning and doing it. Like you can't blame the guy for conning over a bunch of people. You can't you can't blame him for that. What I can blame him for is, is hiring fucking Mike Pence. So people talk, "Oh, let's impeach him." Let's imp I'm like, "Fuck you, let's impeach him." Do you realize how fucking evil his vice president is? And then Beyond that, the fuck that he's got fucking Newt Gingrich and fucking Rudy Giuliani and fucking Ben Carson, <laughs> all the goddamn castoffs from the fucking 19 people that he beat in their fucking primary. And this. Uh, all right, well, teach we just. creationism. Which, you know. Here's, here's, here's. Start okay. electrocuting gay people. Well, a lot of, a lot of um, people in uh, the right wing are, are for states' rights. Mm hmm. Um, and if you want to look at the silver lining in this yep. recent election, the fo now that you are a resident of Massachusetts again, yes, our, our election went pretty well. Our election did go pretty well. Um, like as far as the ballot initiatives, mm. uh, the 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 casino gaming parlor went, uh, went down. The extra like slot parlor that that was a no. I I actually voted yes for that mm. because. I don't give a shit how many slot parlors are there. there that are. one was more even. Like that one could have gone either way. Um, that was closer actually no. It was that one wasn't close. It was oh, very was very okay. hard, was. Uh, very hard no from most people. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then question two about more charter schools. 
Um, I think anybody uh, that has been watching uh, John Oliver in the past, uh, mm. in, I don't like his show tonight. I, I I might actually try to stay up for it. Yeah. Because like I want to see what the fuck he has to say. Yeah. Although I've I've heard people say that people like John Oliver are part of the. I mean, they're part of the liberal problem that you're talking. Yes. About. That 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 are basically talking down to the people yeah. that they think they're dumb that right. you know don't see the same way as you. Yeah. Which is hilarious, and I and I find. Hel- I find really funny right. and I agree with to a certain extent. And I, I'm a culprit. Not mm-hmm. that anybody listens to the show besides like <laughs> Brian and, and Becky and a couple yeah. other people well, yeah. uh, consistently, Matt, you know, Leo, yeah, no, but there are people who I'm just, who... I'm listening to people that email us. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, but like, you know, but we're, we're sort of, uh, we're, we're sort of part of the problem. Yeah. And but the thing is, I find it hilarious, and so like I'm like, darn it! Like I like what he's mm. doing, I I like the way he's presenting these things. Yeah, yeah. But... No, he, he, I mean, I I just uh, the other night before the election, I was showing Stephanie a few of them, and and like she was really getting it. There was an MLM one that he did last week. Oh, the, the, the multi level marketing. Which one? is, I mean, I really wanted to show her that because I feel like we've come close to or fallen for some of the me, not me. I'm very, I've been very anti uh, MLM my entire life, but I see people that I care about looking for some way to make money. And, and so I, I really, um, I really wanted her to see that one. Um, yeah, no, I mean he he makes good points, but he he is he is to some extent part of the part of the problem of people wanting to just put down us uh, liberal elites. I mean, I and I get the sense that there are people in my family who see me as that. And um, but the thing is, like, I think yeah. to to be a liberal elite, I think we need to actually be like super well off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we we are well off in the fact that we're white men. Yes. <laughs> and that anything that this asshole does is going to affect us last. Um, um well, but... uh, uh, uh well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But the thing is like, you know, we just like as as like, you know, heterosexual white men, yeah. we need Sorry, to... heterosexual white men. Yes. Right. Heterosexual white men, the white gay men, they 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 get it just before. We us. need to support like, you know, if we hear that there's an injustice happening yeah. to somebody we know or care about, we need to yes. you know, support them. Like I right. mean, like not that... just wear a safety pin. Have you yes. heard about that? Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. I used to wear a safety pin on my sweatshirt when like the pocket broke. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't realize I was helping people. Well, it's a. I think it's a post Brexit thing, not necessarily. And is it um, safe? Is it safe? <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, what was I going to say? I don't know. You were you were off on something, and I I feel like I stopped your I stopped your train of thought. I forgot. I'm I right the, I, This is my third beer. I stood I'm, right I'm... on the tracks. Um, I I had post election. Um, Post-election Wednesday trauma uh, syndrome. Well, Wednesday, uh, late morning, early afternoon, I, I went in to teach my my Monday Wednesday class, uh, which is um, there are some uh, straight white dudes in there, but there are a lot of trans uh, trans people. There's a lot of women. I didn't realize um, there was this many trans. Like I'm like you know you you ha- you are closer to it because yeah. you are you are you're you're in the college environment. Yeah. No, I'm I'm very close to it and. Um, some of them didn't show up. Um, I'm I'm still concerned about them because I haven't heard anything. Um, uh, a few of the women that did show up were were openly weeping, um, and uh, and the, everyone else was just just morose. Um, aside from the person whose story was being workshopped that day, who seemed um, at least okay, maybe just because they were nervous about having their story talked about. And um, so, like that, like the the, so they, the criticism part maybe got cut slightly short because yeah. people actually wanted to talk about something else. Yeah, well, I mean, so, so we we did our best to get through the the business of it, and then we had about half an hour left, and then I just sat there and uh, and I said, "Here, I'm, I'm here if you want to talk to me." And and they did. So for like 35 minutes, we talked, and they cried some more, and I tried not to uh, not to get emotional. Um, and they asked me, and in in the days since, I realized what a potentially dumb answer this was. But but one of the women asked me, uh, and I say women, I could say young women, but whatever. Um, young teacher, <laughs> the sub. No, sorry, that, that is completely inappropriate. <laughs> one of the women asked me. She said, 
um, has it, you've been through more presidents than, than us. And I was like, oh yeah, old man. <laughs> Thanks. Um, like, uh, has it ever Carter, been? Carter, double Reagan, yeah. Bush, double Clinton. Yep. Uh, double, uh, double Bush. Double Bush. Um, and, uh, double, uh, double I think Obama. that's, like, you know, a lot of people's dreams is to have double Bush. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with double Bush, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, although lots of people, lots of people do a lot of trimming these days. So yeah, I don't it's know. not even any bush. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like, know. In the seventies, you were more likely to get double bush than um, uh, maybe even you know when when we got it in the aughts. But I think by then people were, yeah, trimming down. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they actually have like the like the fetishists that like it when the yeah. There's there's, a, there's some fetishists out there that like the double Reagan. Double Reagan. <laughs> Well, uh. well, I like it when people. <laughs> no, they asked. So the woman I couldn't she, even improv anything funny there. She, Sorry, yeah, she asked me <laughs> too drunk. Um, she asked me, "Has it ever been this bad before?" And I struggled. And and the best that I could come up with uh, was Reagan. I said, uh, "I said, well, you know, a lot well, of us. <laughs> well, <laughs> I like jelly beans in my butt. <laughs> That's said, funny, right? Yeah, yes. Jelly, <laughs> I don't think jelly beans in the butt are ever not funny. Okay, think, good. I think that was a safe choice. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> thinking of that bunny and I think it's a hop uh, who shits uh, jelly beans. I think I didn't see that. Um, it's he's in it with uh, with with the dude who plays Cyclops in the X Men movies. Ah. Yeah. Oh. He plays drums, the bunny. I remember, like, the, we would play that uh, X Men versus Street Fighter game. Mm. We actually talked about that very recently. <laughs> yes, and like, <laughs> we would we would have like when uh, one of uh, Cyclops' moves was mm. uh, was Optic Blast, which is yes. the same move as doing like a, a Hadouken with like okay, Rework yeah. Hand mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, someone was like, oh, are you having a good time? And then I would be like, I'm having an... And I'd do the move and it would say, optic blast. <laughs> I'm having an optic blast. <laughs> Get it? I, I Yes. <laughs> um, and I, so I said Reagan. And I said, you know, uh, for, for a lot of us, the fear of nuclear war had kind of died down. But I remember, like, partially because of a really creepy... Um, Orson Welles narrated uh, Nostradamus documentary, partially because of, of just other stuff. I remember being terrified of nuclear war, of bombs being dropped. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't really have any idea because I was, well, I didn't know. I, 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 did I know I was, I guess I was straight, um, whatever. But like, I yep. wasn't thinking about that. Um, I was a white, I was a white boy in a suburban neighborhood um, with, uh, with parents who made enough money. Like, there wasn't a lot of danger in my world. So danger! I, so I had no idea how bad things actually were for people in the 80s. And I tried to explain this. I tried to say, you know, Reagan did not say the word AIDS um, until tens of thousands of people had died. Um, well, and, tens of thousands of people have died, so AIDS. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how it went. Um, if, if you want a transcript, look on the internet. Yeah, um, I just gave it to you, but you can look it up anyways. <laughs> but in the... In the ins- <laughs> In the ensuing day, and I tried to say, like, so, I, you know, he does that, these was, impressions. that was, <laughs> that was worse, maybe, I don't know, and I was very, I was very wishy-washy about it. Um, you know, in the days since, I've seen, I've seen that a lot of people have been saying that, and a lot of people have been coming out and saying, yeah, it's kind of cheap to say, like, we survived Reagan, we'll survive this, because a lot of people didn't survive Reagan. And, and I don't think, I feel a little bit better about myself, because that's yeah, because not the AIDS. point. That's not the point I was trying to make. I was trying to say, has it ever been as bad as this? And I was like, well, for a lot of people, it was as bad as this. That's the point I was trying to make. So I don't think I'm trying to say, yeah, we're all going to survive this because we all survived Reagan. That is, that's stupid. Um, uh, we have, have we as a country been through this? Yeah, we've been through this and it was terrible. And I hope that it's not as bad this time. Um, that's all, all, all we can hope. Um, you All know, right. and now in, in the ensuing days, I, I you know, I still, I, I'll, I'll go to class tomorrow or today as this, as this episode comes out, and I just hope that I see a lot more of the people that I haven't heard from now in, in close to a week, um, who are, who are very scared, understandably, because it's their rights, um, that are, that are probably the first to go under this, uh, this new regime. I, the thing is, like, and, and I, I've comforted myself a little bit by reading up on what he can and cannot do. Well, the president um, can't do a lot. Yeah. 
Like, he literally can't, like, you know, like, we put a lot of stock into mm. someone being the president of the United States, but, like, right. the president has, um, has power, but not... Yeah, you know, a lot power. of the play, like, you know, mm. as far as laws go, the, mm-hmm. he cannot write all goddamn, he can make an executive order. Right. But, you know, what the fucking legislature needs to do to replace that executive order is, you know, do their fucking job. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that he has a, a Republican, um, a, you know, House and Senate. Um, the other thing that people have been bringing up this, this uh, they've been, been retweeting this a lot, and I've seen people try to correct it, but the correction hasn't been coming out as much, is that... Um, when it comes to is it amend is it amendments that you need not just two thirds of the house and I, I'm getting this all me- messed up. You mixed mean amen- up. amendments to the constitution? Amendments to the constitution. You don't just need the house and the senate, but you need two thirds of the states to ratify it. Is that uh, Brian can tell us? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's true because when suffrage uh, came mm-hmm. into effect, as yeah. far as the. Uh, the women being able to vote, like right. uh, like they got most of the states, yeah. like bing 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 bing, yeah. Um, and then uh, they it just like like the the last possible like I think it was uh, it was down to Tennessee, mm, yeah. I think it. I think I'm right with it being Tennessee, right. and then it, like there was just somebody uh, that that voted yay when they, they were they were going to vote nay, mm-hmm. and it basically ended up being ratified in Tennessee right. when they weren't expecting it to, and then yeah. so basically suffrage happened because of a of a state in the South because like you know somebody was like you know someone. On the roll call, said yay someone. No, they're... someone like he had a letter from his mother yeah. saying that I hope you do the right thing, mm. and he, you know, I, being someone who necess- isn't necessarily close to their mother, yeah, wouldn't take this uh, advice to heart. But I imagine but I a lot this... of people might. Yeah, uh, he listened to his mother, right, and and voted the what we consider and what America and the mm. rest of the world maybe should consider is the right way in saying that women should be allowed to vote. Yes. Well, so the the thing that's been floating around the internet is that the um, that the Democrats are only control was it 13 i don't know they the the thing that's been floating around is that the democrats only can only control x number of state legislatures right now and because of that if they were to lose one more state legislature they would not have the uh the numbers they would need to prevent an amendment but the the correction that i've seen going around less is that you don't necessarily need to hold both houses in the state legislature. You only need to hold at least one of the houses in the state legislature. And if you factor that in, the Democrats control enough. They've got three or four um, state uh, That's why pushing. two years from now mm. matters. Get out there and vote for yes. whomever you can to replace the dicks that are going to do bad things. Right. Well, I know. Yeah. And also, I mean, we like, can't vote on the Supreme Court justice that he names the the one or two or however. Yes, many. but what we can do mm. is is uh, is is call every represented call every representative <laughs> yes. that we have once that ha- like everything every person that like we have voted for in the state mm. of Massachusetts or whatever state you're in. Yeah. Uh, Virginia, North Carolina, wherever, right. like call your representatives and say, I don't agree with this. Do not go for the, like everybody, you know, get like, get a fucking slew of people to call up your representative and say, yeah. no. Fucking- yeah. And actually that's the, that's the other thing I've seen going around is that calling is, it was somebody who used to work in a legislator's office. And they said like the calls were the one thing we could not ignore. Like, you know, we could mail. And I know could be and no one, no one on the conservatives emails could be shifted off to wherever, but you have to answer the phone. Yeah, like yeah. you know, and just call. There's also write letters, call, like do whatever you can, like say you know, like we are your constituents. Yeah. We are the ones who are actively like seeking out you to do this. You mm. are our elected offic- official. You are our representative. You need to represent our ideals. Yeah. The other thing that's been floating around, and I guess it keeps getting taken down, is a spreadsheet listing the the how to contact all of the electors that will be voting on December 19th to make Donald Trump the president in spite of the fact that Hillary Clinton is going to have more popular vote than anybody aside from Barack Obama. I, I like as much as like the, like that. Do you think I mean, yeah, go ahead. I mean, 
I don't think anything. I mean, like, happen, we, as, but... as much as as much as that would be great if it happened. Mm. I like our current system says we have the electoral college. Right. You know, it's if it's a winner take all state. If mm. Donald Trump won even by one vote, right, he should get that state. But I isn't mean, like, the electoral college there to? I've seen people make this argument. The electoral college is there to prevent a Donald Trump from getting the presidency, because if the people all decided we want to uh, nominate. Um, I don't fucking all the people who put Harambe down um, and you had enough people say, I want to I want to nominate a dead fucking ape um, to be president. Well, the, the Electoral College is like, um, we're not going to we're not going to make a dead ape. The uh, the, the the president, we're not going to like get interpreters and psychics in here to, to consult with the dead apes body to find out what what policy will be. We're going to we're going to put the other person in. Um, isn't uh, the Electoral College is there to prevent uh, Donald Trump and dead apes? It, well, the thing is, also, the the uh, the 50% of the American people, or mm. actually probably like 52% of the American people, yeah. that did not vote in this election, right. maybe you should have fucking spoke up. Maybe. maybe you should have spoke up with your fucking vote and prevented this. Like, I'm, like, 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 we might need to lay in the bed that we've made yeah. because you guys didn't feel like going out I know, or taking to, a fucking day off. I've tried, I haven't done the research. Or, or, or early voting or doing, like, like, cause, like, a lot of states had early voting this yeah. year. Like, if you didn't fucking early vote or vote, I'm like fucking so mad at you i mean you may have voted for trump and i don't fucking care like, i care but I, I don't because i'd rather somebody vote and fucking have like be like hey i'm being a part of the system instead mm. of fucking being like just ugh. i lost my point all right so i have another point all okay. right so like i like i seriously understand mm. I mean, you know, Becky and I had a little bit of a conversation about this, and like, I understand, like, from her point of view as a woman, yeah, uh, why it was really disappointing yeah. that the uh, the first woman president uh, mm -hmm. wasn't it didn't happen, right? Because like, there has been so much history in the past. Obviously, history is in the past. <laughs> asshole <laughs> so much history in the past <laughs> and in the future um there's been so much, history, so much history that like you know in in as far as like you know regular jobs where mm. like women who are like alarmingly qualified right. are passed over for less qualified men yes and and, this is and i understand like i understand that like i understand uh the, you know but you know, from from my perspective, mm. and, and you know, I've never been a, a, a Hillary, woohoo, yay! I, I like I like that lady. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I've been going through my uh, my website. Um, I've been bringing a lot of that stuff back online. It's an ongoing project, and I found a post from the um, from early two thousand eight. Yeah, no, yeah, early two thousand eight, late two thousand seven, where I was, I was. I was talking on my blog about who I was going to vote for, where even then I was talking about having been a Hillary uh, supporter since the first whispers she might run. But yes, anyway. But, so so yeah, I, I have that's not where, been. That's where you and I stand. I think that's well known. Um, yeah. So like, I mean, we, we talked about it during the primaries. I, uh, you did vote for Hillary in the primary. No, right? I voted for Bernie. Oh, I, you, you did? You remember? I voted. You guys convinced me. I was like, all right, you know what? But he still didn't win the state. So. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, okay. So, you know, and, you know, I was saying... Uh, what if what if uh, the lovely woman Ann Coulter was running on the Republican ticket for the president, and then she was the nominee? Mm -hmm. Would women get behind her because, like, let's get her in there as the first woman president? What? Well, yeah, I seriously doubt it because, yeah. and like the amount of uh, like you know, and and I think the the problem with with. Hillary did not get a, a significant amount of, uh, I mean, she still, she got a lot, a lot more, uh, of the white female vote than, mm. than didn't, but there was a significant amount of women that voted, that, against, that her. voted against her. And yeah. so I remember I, I didn't stay up the whole night. Um, but one of the last things I remember seeing was a woman being interviewed in a bar somewhere, um, who was struggling to explain why she she voted for Trump, but then eventually came back to the he tells it like it is uh, line, which is just what they all all seem to say. But the thing is, like you know, like, like we we wouldn't be voting for Ann Coulter, mm. like I fucking definitely wouldn't be, right? Because I, she's think, a, she, I, I think she's a terrible person. Yeah. 
Um, Carly Fiorina would have been a better example in that because she actually was uh, in the uh, in the. No, room. I was trying to use like a, a person that I have right. little or no regard for. I know I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You, but if you were, if you were, I didn't. Going, I, I don't going know. Back I, to your point before about imagining the other side of the argument, I think you would have been better served in the argument to talk about somebody who was a realistic. Cho- Ann Coulter is never. She could be a choice. <laughs> I should not say that. No, 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 wait, no, 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 no. You're what not I predicting predict, this. What I predict turns out to be true, so I'm going to say it. Ann Coulter will never be a candidate for president of the United Good. States. Good. I'm glad you said that, Chris. Um. <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, it, like, I, I, I don't know enough. We about will it. not die in a nuclear holocaust. Thank you for saying all these <laughs> awesome things. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, like... Elections aside, like, you know, the the fact that, you know, everybody was like complaining about like how the candidates didn't talk about climate change as, a, mm. as an issue. Certainly not going to talk about it now. <laughs> you know what? They, you see the fucking people he's But if you no, no, but look, shush, 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 shush. Oh it doesn't matter. We're fucked. Like the amount of people that exist on this planet mm. at this moment yeah. and that will continue to exist. Yeah. And if we pr- reproduce at the rate that we're reproducing, right. like I'm not just saying in the United States, I'm saying everywhere, yeah. we will hit a point where we no longer have enough like fresh water on mm. this planet mm-hmm. to sustain the amount of people that are going to live here. Yeah. So like... Like we're <laughs> fucked. It doesn't matter. Like we could, we could, you know, like the next twenty years, like fart out as much fossil fuels as we fucking could, and we'd still be fucked. We and are like I think the, specs in an indifferent universe, basically. So ba- I think the only thing that could say, like, and I tweeted about it, and this mm. this was like half joke, half serious. Yeah, is that if artificial intelligence gets uh, gets good enough, mm. mm-hmm. uh, that they they that Siri and Alexa, they're all gonna wipe and they us out. they basically wipe us or most of us out, except for like, and this coming back to uh, porno for pyros. <laughs> hopefully, they'll keep some of us around we'll as pets, pets. <laughs> because the like. Like human beings um, are basically made to survive. Mm-hmm. Like that's what we've done for you know um, ten uh, or no, sorry, um, how long? Uh, th- I know three, it depends three, on whether or not you're asking Ben. Three Carson. or five thousand years. I Something think that's like that. a, that's Something like that. the extent of how long we've been mm-hmm. around. Yeah. And uh, fake dinosaurs were put in the ground by God. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Or maybe millions of years. Who knows? You kid, that's what my kids are going to start learning soon. No, they won't, because they have... Well, Ben Carson is the Secretary of Education. What? I think that's that's who he's got. I don't understand how you can become a a doctor of medicine and then think that... I don't understand how you can preach against uh, big banking and then, you know, hire uh, the the person from Goldman Sachs to be your secretary of uh, the treasury or whatever the fuck it is. Well, you know, it doesn't matter because the Fed basically controls um, the the interest rates and and is supposed to regulate where um, the United States government doesn't and Mm -hmm. they don't. And then we have I do look forward to being investigated by Newt Gingrich's new uh, House Amer- House Committee on Un American Activities. Here, you know what? what? This is one of those things where I say we need to change the rhetoric. Mm. Um, basically, when someone says that they need to that they need to stifle your speech or you shouldn't mm. say that because it's un American, yeah, you need to immediately come back with, "I'm sorry, what you just said to me." is so incredibly un-American that you should um, go off into a boat and live in the, well, the Atlantic Ocean. The, the president-elect is already, you know, talking about silencing and suing uh, reporters and, and things that are saying bad things about him. So, so well, then we, we have to just say that's un-American. Mm. And use that rhetoric because the, the, that group thinks that that's the worst thing you can be is un-American. Right. So by saying that you are that you're giving up your free speech Mm. is like, that is the first amendment. That's the one we said, this is the one that's the most important. Right. Is is number one. We can't give this up. Just say that's fucking un-American. You don't have to say the F word, but you can because this is fucking America. 
I wish we could have just ended the show with that. <laughs> well, yeah, it'd be a short show. We, we got six minutes left. So, oh, darn it. Mm, but mm. I think that was a great point. That was a great point. We should we should be playing. I If it wasn't so much dun, effort. Dun, 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 oh, wait, that's the graduation song. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to play at that point? I don't, it's, it's, don't put I, it I'm not going to do it. No, but, uh, but what would be the, uh, I'm trying to think of what would be the song. Um um, one of those America, one of those uh, dim dare America songs. And I'm proud to be an no, American. No, don't you fucking dare. <laughs> Where at least I know I'm free. Do we have anything else on the list? Um, Steve got a haircut. Chris quit Facebook. Chris finally watched Patton Oswalt. Oh, the new special. I did. It didn't, make, it, just... it didn't make me cry as much as I as I thought it would. But it was really fucking it, funny. It though. was really funny. It was really his um, uh, his. I, I do I, I don't I want to kind of bring in his bit about changing terminology to my um, to my class next spring um, because I, I keep having trouble with um, with I think it's the word I don't know if it's the word transvestite or what word it is that appears in the novel Wonder Boys it's an antiquated it is now considered an antiquated word by transgendered individuals. Um, and it's caused me some trouble because it's in the book that I teach in this particular class. And I kind of want to bring in Patton's bit about how, like, you know, you can have the, the well-intended person who says the wrong words uh, versus the person who uses all the right words and is a complete asshole. I kind of want to bring that in, but I'm afraid out of context of knowing who Patton is or the rest of the special that you, that the students might just also I'm dealing with freshmen who are not great with nuance sometimes. Um, <sighs> but we'll see. I, I might, I might do it anyway. Um, uh, Steve comedy, bang, bang, a hundred. Oh minutes. yes. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was listening to, uh, uh like we'll wrap I was, up with, this. I was trying to listen to like other podcasts that, that were hopefully not, uh, Related to politics, mm. like, you know, uh, following the election, because yes. I was trying to get away from that shit, mm -hmm. which I imagine a lot of people in the United States were, yes. and a lot of people were actually seeking it out. So, yeah. sought. That's sought. the word that I always, like. that I always, like, search for and never can find. I'm besotted? I'm no. searching. I've sought for it. I've sought uh, I, uh, but I, I, I was, uh, I've been a fan of the, uh, the comedy bang, bang, uh, mm -hmm. like television show that's on IFC, which I think is ending this, uh, this, the season, right. uh, like, and I think they got maybe a couple of episodes left. So check them out. Um, and this particular episode, Weird Al, uh, was the, the guest. Mr. Uh, Yankovic. Mr. Weird Al Yankovic. He mm. was the guest. And, uh, they were talking about Leonard Cohen and how he's still alive. <laughs> And this was like October 26th. Oh, God. And I was like, oh. Fuck you, 2016. <laughs> and they were like, I can't believe Leonard Cohen's still alive. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I'm like, I didn't know he was still alive either. And then like, and then a couple, like, like what was it, the day after the election? Well, I. I th or was it the day of the election? No, no, or it was like the day after. But I thought I read something that suggested he had died earlier. Go ahead. You keep talking. I'm going to find out exactly. <laughs> no, I'm, what, I have what. nothing like well, crazy more to say about it. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, no, it, it was, it was, I mean, we at the at when we get to like the last episode of the year, we really should bring up the list of all of the people who have died. Like it's just yeah, because uh, that's fun. No, Everybody no, he, likes he, listening he, to that. He died on election. Was election? No, wait. Was election day the seventh or the eighth? The ninth. No, the ninth was the day after, wasn't it? I thought. What the fuck? What, I don't know. He died on November seventh. He died on November seventh. So it was Monday. So he died the day before the election, but the news didn't come out until the day after. Well, yeah, I imagine like like with all the other things that people were thinking about and talking yeah. about that uh, it might not have leaked out or maybe the, the family didn't necessarily yeah. release that information until after the election. Right. Or maybe they should have. They should have said Leonard Cohen died and he wants you to vote for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> that might have helped. Oh, well, and then then um, I saw a, a tweet between then and Saturday night. I saw a tweet that was like, all of you who are thinking of doing your uh, your covers of, of Hallelujah, stop it right fucking now. And then, um, of course, uh, on Saturday Night Live this week. Um, uh, oh, my gosh. Why is her name escaping me? Kate McKinnon. There you go. Because um, I would not have come up with it. <laughs> uh, dressed as Hillary. So in her or at least her Hillary uh, wig. 
um, comes out and for the cold open plays Hallelujah. And and Kate, Kate McKinnon, I'm not saying this um, in a disparaging way, Kate McKinnon does not have a Leonard Cohen quality voice. I would say that's fair, right? Well, it, but Leonard Leonard Cohen doesn't okay. necessarily have a classical he have like, a classic, voice. But he but he has it. He has a there's a confidence to his voice that that I don't think I sensed in Kate McKinnon. But that was actually part of what was beautiful about it was that she was uh, she was completely vulnerable and kind of just a person singing a gorgeous song. And um, I was like, yeah, can we just end this? fucking year right here that would be that would be yes we can that would be all right we, we can end this episode here too we can we can we've got about 10 seconds left oh no i mean well <laughs> when you add in the fucking theme song we're fine and now when now dun, dun, dun. <laughs> when and then i play with my balls no one ever actually gets to hear that part of the song <laughs> We should play the whole thing someday. Play the whole, play the whole thing. One, one right of the episodes the or one of the, the, the weeks where we're short. We'll just play the we'll play the whole, whole thing song. next time we're, sh- we're short. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Well, now we're over. Now we're at a minute. Uh, oh. uh, a minute? No. Uh, an hour and 15. Hour, hour and 15 seconds. Keep on like telling me how much time <laughs> we have. An hour and 20. What? 120. An hour and 20 seconds. Okay. Now we're at an hour and 25. Stop it. <laughs> I, I was just kidding. Don't. I didn't mean... Literally say that. And at an hour and 30 seconds, I will tell you that you can find the show notes for this episode at clarkwoods.com slash hot slash 120. That's 120. And if you'd like to comment on all of the many things we got wrong or that made you angry or sad or made you stop listening to the podcast this week. No, or you, if, if you have ideas that will help the republic mm. or, um, you know, if you have a, a country in mind Rebellion that we should, built that we should all... That we should all move to. We, we mm. could go there and then maybe have more success. I don't know. Yeah. It would have to be English speaking because I don't really want to learn, learn another, another language. language. Yeah. I'm a stubborn, dumb American. Send all that of didn't that. vote for Trump. Surprise! <laughs> Send all of that to hot at clarkwoods.com. And if you'd like to catch up with us on Facebook, fuck you, you can't anymore. <laughs> well, you never could with me. <laughs> and you can't with me anymore either. Uh, but you can get us on Twitter. I am at ECC1977. And I am at Tuesday is Loser. That's Tuesday. I-S, Loser, all one word. Also, mm. you can follow all my transponder t- snail adventures mm. at, uh, at OPTC Spam 69. I was about to help you out. I wasn't sure. I forgot what the fucking thing was. I wasn't sure if you could get through it. You was, should follow it. It's I really sp- great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, kiddos. Uh, we'll see you next week for more not pol- for, for not political talk. And hopefully we'll have some f- more fun, better mm. things to talk about. Yes, we're looking forward to being un-American with all of you. No, fuck you. You guys are all un-American. <laughs>